Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? 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 Welcome to the Upside Down Smiley Show, where we talk about real life, but we don't take life too seriously, and we hear the stories of everyday people. My name is Shireen, and we have Kashera here, and today we're going to be talking about the LGBTQ plus community. Cue the intro. I'm doing good, you know, I feel good. It's different being in the house so much. I'm not a homebody, and Miss mm -hmm. Rona has forced me to become one. I miss gatherings, I miss DJing in public spaces. I miss just seeing people. Yeah, I just, I miss being outside. I need outside to reopen as, yeah, as a whole. I feel that. If you are in Chicago, you can definitely check out Cashera at many places. Yeah. Hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. If not, you can always find me on something virtual. So what's your experience been with the LGBTQ plus community? So I came out when I was a freshman in high school. Okay. So that's like 13 or 14-ish. I identify as lesbian. I've never been with a man before. I think they call it like a lone, no, not a lone star, it's some some kind of star. I'm one of those. <laughs> but yeah, like, you know, I came out to my mom and she already knew mm -hmm. and it was super easy coming out to her. I came out to her via text message Aww. Um, before I went to school. Yeah. And she texts back like, yeah, I know, have a good day. Aww. And that was it. Like yeah. we didn't talk about it any further past that. Yeah, you know, like coming out was super easy. My mom, uh, one of her close friends from high school, identifies as pansexual. Okay. So I was already learning these terms at a very young age. Mm -hmm. And then one of her other close friends does drag. Okay. So it was kind of like, you know, we would see him in regular clothing. And then if he did a drag show, he would come by the house afterwards. Yeah. And we would see him in drag. And it would just be like, oh, yeah, that's just like, that's, that's just. That's your aunties and uncles. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's, that's his mom's friend. Like, yeah, yeah. whatever, no big deal. So coming out to her, I kind of already went into it knowing like there it would be very hypocritical of her to have friends that mm -hmm. are part of the community and then not accept one of her children yeah that also identifies in the community so coming out to her was easy her husband not so much so mm -hmm. my mom the man that she's married to now when i was three and he's very homophobic mm -hmm. so like me coming out like she was okay with it but i was living at his house because of school and whatnot mm -hmm. so she was just kind of like you know don't let him know like okay. don't hide your Yourself, but just don't let him know mm -hmm. so I still had to deal with that feeling of like trying to hide it at home which you know when it when I first came out I was scared about it yeah junior year I was just like fuck it yeah like I'm gay if you don't like it kiss my ass yeah. and that was the energy that I've always had since for sure. Um, and I'm sure your mom was probably coming from a place of like protection. Yeah, that's definitely mm -hmm. where it came from. I wasn't upset at her about it. I understood yeah. where it came from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I definitely had to deal with getting bullied in school. Okay. You know, since I came out, um, I lost friends. Mm -hmm. I lost like three or four friends off rip. Like, as soon as I came out, you know, some of my friends were like, girl, we knew that. Like, yeah. you didn't know. Like, right. they were super accepting of it. And then other girls in the class overheard and they were like, oh, wait, you identify as gay? We don't. We don't do that. We don't do that over here. Like, we yeah. can't be your friend. And I'm like, the older students playing pranks on their friends. Mm. So it would be like, a guy would come up to me and be like, oh, you know, so-and-so thinks you're cute. And it would be would like it one be of his. It would be a female. Mm. And I would tell him, like, okay, like, you're full of shit. Like, I know you're kidding. He'd be like, no, nah, I'm for real. I just go say hi to her. I would never go speak to her. Yeah. But then she would walk past me and be like, boy, you stupid. Why the hell would you do that to that, to that girl? Mm. And it's like, y'all can play your jokes, but don't bring me into it. Right. Like, my sexuality isn't something for you to joke about. It's not like a game. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's fucked up because, you know, you hear about people that commit suicide because of shit like that. Yeah. I never had those thoughts, but I definitely understand why people could have those thoughts or would have those thoughts. Yeah. It's not easy, especially when you're around people that constantly would a nitpick at you for it. Right. Tell you that it's a sin, tell you what's wrong, treat you like an outcaster for it. Or treat you like it, it's something you could change. Right. And you can't. You know, mm -hmm. you definitely can't. It's it's sad when you see stuff like that. And I'm very grateful that I haven't had to experience that much hate about mm -hmm. it. If anything, I think I've experienced more of the older generation trying to put fear in me about it. Like your parents' age? Yeah. Yeah. When I was in college, 
I went for an internship and it was at a church, but it was working with a nonprofit that was just like, the offices were in the church. Okay. It wasn't directly associated to the church. Mm -hmm. And one of her friends was just like, don't get your hopes up for this job. And I was like, why, why wouldn't I? And she was like, because you know, you're gay and you're going to yeah. be working at a, a place that is in the church. Yeah. And I was like, okay, but my religious views and my sexual identity shouldn't have anything to do with the job. Yeah. Just because the office is in the church. Like, that has nothing to do with it. I'm not, mm. it's not like I'm going to go out there preaching to the congregation. Like, I'm just here to work for the nonprofit. And she just had it, like, she she had it in her mind that because I was gay, any church was going to turn away and look mm. at it like, a negative but i got the job when i got the job i told her like i don't know why like you would even have that fear yeah like that's your fear don't put that fear in exactly me. and it was almost maybe her fear i do think it might have been her opinion like that you were not both. deserving of the job because you were i think it was not both. in line with their values i think it was both i think it was that but also maybe she experienced that when she was younger mm. that she was overlooked for a job because of her sexuality and it's like okay you know times have changed like yeah. you are way older than i am it's not the same yeah. thing that's interesting. Yeah, it was it was an interesting experience. But outside of that, I'm confident in being who I am. Yeah. I don't really let much get to me. Sometimes it feels kind of different being the gay one in the room. Mm -hmm. Like I used to hate going to college parties because they were always very hetero. You know, and all my friends were hetero. I'm used to being the gay friend of the group. So then of course, like you have to bend to go to their events, to go okay. to their parties, to their clubs. No one really wanted to go to the gay clubs with me. Nobody wanted to go to like the queer parties. It was like oh we're going to a frat party tonight and it's like okay it's gonna be all straight guys marching around in uniform barking at people like <laughs> I don't want to deal with that every yeah. night. It's, so yeah, I had to deal with that. Do you feel more comfortable like at a gay bar? Yes and no. I don't really feel like we have any bars here that are geared towards women. Yeah. They're all for gay men, which is fine by me because they're hilarious. Yeah. Um, you know, I'd rather go to a gay bar than a straight bar. Because at a straight bar, hetero women get annoyed by the dudes that approach them mm. and how they do it. I get annoyed by watching it. And it's just like, these guys have no remorse. They're very very bold. The hetero guys or? The hetero guys, the way they approach women in bars. Yeah. You know, like they're just very. That's kind of tactless. Yeah. And it, I get annoyed watching it. I had your number. <laughs> Could I have it? Could I have it? When I go with my friends, there'll be times where they'll ask like, can I lie and say you're my girlfriend so the, so this guy will leave me alone? Yeah. And I'm just like, sure, I'm single anyways. Every guy in this room feels like they're entitled to any woman in this room. Mm -hmm. Like you're not. Yeah. Just be here and just sit down. The only issue with gay bars out here is that they're very white, they're very male. You know, certain clubs in Boys Town, they really don't want to play hip hop music. Yeah. Which feels a bit racist in itself. Mm. Uh, and people are calling that out right now. I yeah. think Ms. Rona has a lot of people getting called out yeah. left and right right now. I did a, a march for ending nightlife racism. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I saw that. Like, how do you feel about, like, the black LGBTQ plus community? I feel like we oftentimes get overlooked mm. because I feel like people fail to realize the intersectionalities that exist. Okay. I think oftentimes when you're speaking of different movements, people will only look at, like, a very centralized form of. It, mm -hmm. Right. So like when you speak of Black Lives Matter, yes. you know, people have been as of late, like taking the extra step to come forth and say, like, you need to realize that black trans lives matter. Yeah. Black gay rights matter. Yeah. Um, and even in like the black community, there is still a lot of homophobia that exists. Yeah. There's a lot of transphobia that exists. So it's, you know, it's definitely one of those areas where it can get overlooked. And even with black women calling out men in general, mm -hmm. like, you know, you need to take care of black women more. It's like you have to also remind them like trans women matter in that conversation masculine women matter in that conversation women that you're not attracted to matter in that conversation mm. you know and then to be a, a black queer woman and you're masculine and you're not the type that men would go for like it's like you really have to lay it out for them like all these intersectionalities exist and they all still matter yeah your life matters yeah just your just your life Period. Just your basic necessity just, of living exactly. and breathing exactly and it doesn't matter anything about like your past your history your criminal record none of 
of that shit right. matters. None just you matters. living exactly. is all that we're asked for. That's it. That's absolutely it. Yeah. So being a, que a black queer woman is, you know, I feel like you almost have to make your own space. There's not really any space that's automatically created for you. Yeah. And there's definitely orgs that are now, that have been doing the work to create space. I can't really think of any club I can go to on a Friday night. And you feel like this is for me. Right. This has been created for me. Exactly. Yeah. I have to go to a specific party mm -hmm. on a specific night that they create. Yeah. It's not, it's not a typical nightlife type of thing. Yeah. Which I would love to see a queer club come about where, yeah. or even a black club come about where I could go any weekend and feel comfortable going. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel comfortable going wherever because right. I have that I don't give a fuck attitude. Yeah. Like if you don't want me here, I can tell and I'll leave and my money goes with me. Right. But yeah, I'll go wherever I want, but it would be nice to see that space for other people that don't have that type of comfortability in themselves. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, that like, makes sense. It took me a while to get to where I am now to feel for this sure. way. I just think, I always think about like the younger generation. Mm -hmm. Like what is someone that's like 19 or 20 that looks like me or sees a piece of themselves in me? When they hit 21, where are they going to try to go? Right, because we don't go out and drink before 21, guys. See, uh, you can be like me and it's okay. You can be like me. Don't tell don't, your friends, no, you don't let your friends tell you that it's lame because it's not lame, okay? It's not lame. No, be more like Hashera, be less like me in certain I waited. situations. Yeah, in certain situations. <laughs> I waited. I waited since I was 21. But yeah. yeah, like I always think about the younger generation. Like, what are they saying? I have kids like come to my events and some of them will say like, well, I'm only here because you're a DJ. Like I knew, I knew I that it was that. going to be safe because you're here. That's love. It's beautiful to hear, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm like, wow, like I'm able to create space just by being in this venue that you mm -hmm. wanted to come here. Yeah. But then it made me think like, okay, but what if I'm off on a weekend? Or like, what if I'm booked to do a wedding? There really isn't a, a space for people that yeah. look like me to just go on a random night to celebrate whatever. So yeah, you know, I would love to see a space open that's mm -hmm. black, queer, femme centered. Or if not a space, like just a, a regular occurring party yeah where it's like every week every other week and I've been just trying to look at this time as like being thankful for it yeah right thankful for the time to think yeah and you know now people have time to march you this know? is time to think to reevaluate to fix it mm -hmm. to get it right you know I don't think it's ever too late no to acknowledge your wrongs yeah to begin to fix what you've messed up yeah yeah like I'm, I'm very grateful for all my opportunities for everywhere that I that I've spent and have yeah. spent in the past but I do think you know some of these venues need to do better especially you know being in light life you have a lot of clubs that don't want to book black DJs but they want to play black music then they want to make extremely outrageous dress codes to where they don't want black people wearing certain clothes but white people can wear it and they get right in or they'll tax outrageously high amounts at the door to black patrons and not do the same for white patrons mm -hmm. you know it's just it's very systemic in yeah. that sense and i hope these venues get it together and i really hope that allies start to realize that their biggest threat is their money mm. stop going to these venues yes they'll feel it they yeah. will feel that more than anything you can some of these venues you can post on yelp and google reviews all all day long yeah but if you're still going to their bars and giving them money they're not gonna change anything mm -hmm. the moment that you stop and they start having slow nights back to back that's when they're either gonna change their ways or they're gonna shut their doors yeah you gotta hurt you gotta hit them where it hurts yeah like the power of your dollars is so much more powerful it's than so everyone much realizes powerful. like stop booking dudes yeah like the industry is such a, a white male dominated industry mm -hmm. white first male second <clears throat> book women book trans women in general book queer people you know there's a lot there's a lot of hetero people in the city mm -hmm. but there is just as many queer people mm -hmm. that are not getting to see representation when they go out even if someone appears to be hetero they may not be i get confused you know i have some friends that they look hetero like i thought they were hetero and then they'd be like yeah no i'm gay i'm just like okay cool like <laughs> whatever floats your boat bro right. do your shit paddle yeah. paddle upstream go crazy you know but that that's all also needs to be considered you yeah. know people don't look as what they always present themselves to be so yeah I think if you're especially if you're in the position to put someone on put them on like I get it you want to keep putting on your best friend because he's your best friend he's been holding you down for years you can use that time to put on somebody else because I can guarantee you that one drop is going to have a ripple effect and it'll put on so many other people in you doing so mm -hmm. find ways to uplift the voices of queer people understand that intersectionalities exist school yourselves on what that means Try to learn the history of queerness and pride i think you learn a lot from your friends yep and the moment that you have a queer friend in your circle 
you'll be able to understand what it means to be a better ally. Yes, you can be an ally just off rip, like, you know, don't be homophobic, don't be transphobic, all this great stuff, right? But I think to understand on a different level how to be a better ally, Yeah. if you're a hetero person and you're surrounded by hetero people, you then have a whole bunch of straight people discussing gay issues. Yeah. That's not going to solve anything. Yeah. That's like having a whole bunch of white people trying to discuss black issues. Yeah. You're not going to get anywhere. If you don't have a gay friend, find a gay friend. That's what I always say. Like, not like with the idea of tokenism. Like, oh, I got one black friend. Yeah, person. don't do oh, it I to have one, one gay friend. No, no, don't no. Don't do it like don't that. Don't do it like that. Do it because you actually want to get to know that person. Yeah. And like, maybe that just starts off as just like interacting with people that you see, but you never speak to. Absolutely. You know, or like if you're in a store, just being friendly yeah. to like a black person or someone that you think is maybe within the, in the community. Absolutely. Right. Just so you feel like, because I think some people are just uncomfortable with even interacting. Yeah. And so just say hello yeah. or just smile or do something simple. You have nothing but time right now. <laughs> yes. Nothing but time. And Netflix and Hulu is literally just like throwing the movies at you. It's like my whole Netflix, as soon as I log in, it's like pride. <laughs> Learn about blackness. And it's like, I'm both, bro. I, I know. I already know what's going on. I appreciate it. I, I already know what's up, G. I get it. I yeah. got it. I got it. I got it. There's some really great documentaries on Netflix. Yeah, there's great documentaries. Um, I just watched, what is the name of it? It's about being trans in the in the movie industry. Oh, wow. It is so amazing. Okay. And like, even trans women that have been hiding it come out wow. and speak about their experiences of having to just hide it mm. for their entire movie career. Wow. Did you watch Cheetah Girls? Yeah, not that much, but I remember. If you remember it, the black woman that's in the stands teaching the, like coaching the Cheetah Girls. You got a boogie woogie woogie through the number for your talent show. She's a trans woman. Wow. Yeah. And you can't. I had no, no idea. idea. No, when I saw the documentary, I was like, oh, they got an ally. And then she came out and said <laughs> that she's a trans woman and been hiding it for her entire career. I was wow. like, I, I didn't even know. Right. And I'm, I'm gay. I didn't even know. My gaydar isn't that great. But still, I didn't even know. Ooh, stop misgendering. Mm. I get like just off my voice because I, I have a very low voice. Mm -hmm. I get referred to as sir a lot. Mm. And I'm not offended by it, mm -hmm. but like <laughs> my my ex, it used to be her biggest pet peeve. Like she hated it. Yeah. Even so, I laugh it off unless like they keep doing it, and it's like, all right, bro, like Let me check yourself. You. Yeah. yeah. But if it's like quick in passing, I just laugh it off. But like my ex, she would like snap right around. She's not a sir. <laughs> And she would let them have it and I was gonna be like, babe, it's all right. right. Know, we're just trying to get some groceries and get get on out of here. It's, just, it's not that big of a deal. He's just trying to pass us in the aisle. It's okay. Seeing her reaction, maybe I should correct people more. Mm -hmm. It makes me battle with myself like, damn, am I being too easy on them? You know, I just do it just because I don't feel like having the conversation with you. Yeah. I'm probably tired. It doesn't, it's not that big of a deal to me at the time. Right. You know, but try to avoid misgendering people, especially if, trans folks. If you do, don't. Do not gender trans if you don't know them i guess just don't gender yeah people in just, general yeah just don't do that at all but if it's a person that you know yeah i think it's always best to ask what, their, what, what their pronouns, pronouns are. are yes yeah. it's such an easy thing to ask if you right. don't know just use they mm -hmm. it's so simple i appreciate you sharing your time with me i appreciate you having me thank yeah. you so much yeah do I'll stuff follow. like this have conversations with people you feel me it's so simple i need y'all to understand that everyday people that you can interact with are so much more important than celebrities and influencers mm. to your life and i want y'all to try try to do that yeah just try just have more conversations with people yeah you know, we're nice you know i haven't met many mean gay people i haven't either right there's, gonna, just be, like there's gonna be nice people there's gonna be mean people yeah in any situation but you can't judge the entire community by that one experience Absolutely. should we say that one more time you cannot judge that entire community by one two three fifty i don't care what the number is yeah look at how many angry karens we see i don't hate white people i don't yeah. hate white women i'm half white i was raised by white women i don't hate white women yeah exactly. but i see angry karens all the time right i just let them be angry whatever they're gonna be mad <laughs> <laughs> They're angry for whatever reason. They're right. out of bananas today. They're gonna be mad. Whatever. Go follow Cash Era. Yes, please follow me. All my social media is at DJ Cash Era. I'm sure it's gonna be down here somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, follow me. I'll be out here. If you see me speak, if you don't know me, still speak. Say hello. Say hello to me.
me. I love I love just talking to people whenever I'm out and about. For real. Yeah. That's good. Thank Thanks, you. Y'all. Appreciate it. Bye, y'all.